Can you use APS-C mode on the a7S III? Yes and no, but you can use APS-C lenses even in filming in 4K. Today, I wanna to show you how. Hey, if you don't know me, my name's Jake and I create content for solo creators on the go. People like me who are working by themselves, running gun creators who are creating small commercial projects, stuff for here on YouTube. And so I test and review equipment here in Alaska and I do tips and tutorials on how to use that equipment. If that's something that interests you, consider subscribing. And that is why I film stuff out in Alaska. You never know when you're gonna see something like that. All right, now that some of that fun is over, let's talk about how you use APS-C mode on the A7S III. Not quite APS-C mode, like cropping in like you do on the A7 III or A7R III or A7R IV, but how you can use some APS-C lenses in 4K on the A7S III. Now, APS-C mode itself, on the camera is limited to 1080p and everything that you film in 1080 but you can use clear image zoom to zoom in one and a half times when filming in 4k at frame rates up to 60 frames a second but before you go sweet i can use clear image zoom to put my lenses on and film anything i want to this thing is All right then, we may need to move to a quieter spot to be able to finish this video. Okay, I hope that was in focus. That's specifically why I switched the camera to F, uh, an aperture of F10, because I wanted to try and make sure the background was at least somewhat in focus in case that happened. And then, that's awesome. So, uh, yeah. But do you even care about APS-C lenses on the A7S III anymore? This is the Suray 35mm anamorphic, which is made for APS-C lenses only. What we're gonna do is film a little bit with this in full frame, just normal 4K, cropping in post, and then we're gonna film some in clear image zoom in 4K and see which one has better quality, if we can even tell the difference. But personally, if I can just use the footage straight out of the camera rather than having to do more post work, I'm, uh, I'm usually all for that. Really? I'm trying to film a video here. Gosh. So this is the Suray 35 millimeter anamorphic filming in 4K, no crop, no, uh, just straight up 4K out of the A7S III. And so now we're going to use clear image zoom to crop in. So that's clear image zoom at 1.3 times, which basically gets rid of all the vignette on this particular lens. Now other APS-C lenses maybe don't have as wide a coverage, so we're gonna go ahead and go all the way into one and a half times. So this is clear image zoom at one and a half times filming in 4K 24 FPS. Alright, we got some footage. Let's get back to the studio and put it up side by side and see which one looks better. And then I will also show you how to get to clear image zoom when you're working with the A7S III. Alright, we put the footage in the computer and I found a couple of things. One, I 
I didn't see that much discernible difference between using clear image zoom or upresing, cropping in and upresing through the computer. The, the difference was, I mean, maybe 2%, 3%. It just was so minimal, it really wouldn't matter. But I did find a couple of interesting things about it. And one was that when you crop in 1.3 times uh, to get in on the, uh, to basically get rid of most of the vignette and to properly de-squeeze the footage because it was using an anamorphic lens. It was a little hard to tell because de-squeezing the anamorphic footage also meant that the way I was cropping in was a little bit weird. But to show you what I mean, I pulled these two clips up here. This is the same exact footage from before, but I had to zoom in 197, almost 200% with you know keeping the proper aspect ratio in order to get the same field of view so if you want the most field of view then it's best to crop in or to zoom in in post but if you want to have the easiest of use right out of the camera obviously using clear image zoom on the a7s3 makes it really easy and when i got down to where i put the two side by side and the way i did this was put it side by side like you saw here then i exported it as the original file type so basically lossless um, as close to the originals as i could and zooming in a couple hundred percent the, the difference is so negligible it really isn't i think it more just has to do with how you want to work with it in post if you want the most amount of flexibility so you can get the widest possible framing with an aps-c lens then doing it in post at least with these suray lenses is the way to go but if you want to just be able to pull the footage right off your camera and start working with it right away in post then using clear image zoom is the way to go and it it makes very little difference at least from what i've seen in the quality of the end result. I wish I had other APS-C lenses to try this out with, but I don't. I just don't have that many APS-C lenses around. The only ones I have are the Suray lenses. But now I wanna show you how to get into APS-C mode because by default, you can't really find it in the camera. So here's how you get to clear image zoom on your camera. Hit menu. You have to go down to number nine on the camera shooting menu. Hit zoom. And it's set by default to optical zoom only. Enable clear image zoom by hitting that, and then you can go back out. And what I've done is I've, ex I've assigned this to a custom key in my movie settings, and it is the uh, top number one button, which is the movie button that I, I changed my shutter uh, button to be the movie button, but that's, um, that's what I do. Now, if you wanna see other accessories and settings that I like to use with the a7S III and get the most out of your Sony camera, you can click or tap right there. I will see you in one of those videos. As always, if you have questions, ask me in the comments below or join my live stream on Wednesday nights. I will see you in the next video as soon as I kayak three miles, get in my car and drive home. Cheers.